So today we're going to talk about theoretical probability of simple events. So the one thing that I want to go ahead and start with, remember theoretical probability is what should happen. So we haven't done the event yet. We haven't done the experiment. We're talking about in a perfect world, what should happen, right? A simple event is where one thing is happening. So you'll notice some things down at the bottom. We're going to do some examples, but simple events just means one thing is happening, okay? So let's start with the jar bag of marbles here, okay? So we have a bag of marbles, and let's say we want to draw a green marble, okay? So we want the probability of drawing a green marble, okay? Probability of drawing a green. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to go and you're going to look. There's one, two, three, four green marbles out of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total marbles in the bag. So you're wanting to know how many are green out of how many total. So the probability of drawing a green marble would be four out of ten. And the thing that we can actually do with that, we can divide four and ten both by two. So if we do that, four divided by two is going to give me two, and ten divided by two is going to give me five. So the probability of drawing a green marble from the bag is two-fifths. Simple events, there's one thing happening, you're not having to do any multiplication, you're just finding how many are in the bag that are green out of how many total. So you'll see some people write number of favorable outcomes. That means how many things met the criteria. So the number of favorable outcomes was four. Four of them were green out of the total possible outcomes. So this is really what we just did. There were four that were green out of 10 total possible outcomes. Okay, let's do another example. All right, so what we have this time, let's say we want to do the same thing and we want the probability, let's say of probability of a yellow, okay? Probability of drawing a yellow marble. So you look at the bag of marbles, we have one yellow out of the 10 total. So if we were to count them up again, we already know there's 10, so one out of 10. So the probability of drawing a yellow would be one out of 10, okay? I wanna look at something really quickly. We talked about this, um, Last week, it's called a complement. So if the probability of drawing a yellow is 1 out of 10, what would the probability of not yellow be? Okay, so in that case, we know that the probability of drawing a yellow is 1 out of 10. So the probability that it's not going to be a yellow, we, would look, we could look here in the bag, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 out of the 10 that are not yellow, or we could just look at this original fraction. If we know that one out of 10 are yellow, then we know that nine out of 10 would not be yellow, okay? All right, so let's maybe switch it up and we're gonna maybe move to the spinner down here. So I'll move our um, bag of marbles and I'll bring the spinner back up here. So let's talk about maybe some probabilities to deal with the spinner, okay? So let's say we want the probability of spinning, let's say a red, okay? Probability of spinning red. So you look at how many of them are red. There are two that are red out of one, two, three, four, five, six. So two that are red out of six total. So the probability of spinning a red would be two out of six. We could, you know, definitely simplify this by two. So the probability would be one third. Okay, one-third, the probability of spinning a red would be one-third, absolutely. Again, we are talking about simple events, okay? So we're not spinning a red and then spinning a blue. We're not spinning a yellow and then flipping a coin. We are only doing one thing, okay? Only talking about doing one experiment at a time, okay? 
What about if we decided what's the probability of spinning blue or red? This is still a simple event. There's still only one event happening. We're only spinning the actual spinner one time, but the probability of spinning a blue or a red would change our probability a little bit. These are both blue. These are both red. So the probability of spinning blue or red, that's one, two, three, four out of the six total. So you combine the blue and the red when it's talking, when it says or, okay? So four out of six would be your fraction. Again, we could simplify this guy by two and it would be two thirds, okay? The probability of spinning blue or red would be two out of three, okay? Last example, we'll draw and move this little spinner down here and we'll move this coin back up here. This is one that you're gonna see a lot. The probability of the coin landing on tails, okay? Again, we're flipping the coin one time. If we're flipping the coin one time, it's still a simple event. If we move to flipping the coin more than once, that's when it becomes a compound event. So the probability of flipping the coin and it landing on tails, one side is tails out of two total sides, okay? So the probability of flipping the coin and it landing on tails would be one out of two. When you're talking about simple events, remember we're talking about theoretically, so what should happen, we haven't done any experiment yet, and theoretically, it should land on tails half of the time, okay? So just remember, simple events, you got one event happening, that means one fraction, and just make sure you look at what's going on in your figures.